This isn't the ultimate hand carryable solar generator. This is. Check out my first video for info on it. But this video is about this solar generator. It isn't quite as powerful as the ultimate, but because it has some of the same parts, I will call it the ultimate junior. It is a 12 volt nominal volt system. It has the same Kotec 2000 watt, 3500 watt surge inverter that the ultimate has. It has four 100 amp hour LFP batteries, not NMC batteries that most people use because NMC batteries are cheaper to buy and a little lighter, but they cost more in the long run since LFP batteries can cycle about three times more. Uses the same SBMS 120 that the Ultimate has. 600 watt charge rate. It has a 600 watt Anderson type of output connectors. And a 300 watt cigarette lighter type of an output connector. Two USBs. An external switch to turn the inverter off and on. Two external 120 volt plugs connected to the inverter. Everything is powered all the time except the inverter. At about one third of a watt usage, I wouldn't have to charge the battery for about a year under storage conditions. Because I wanted to make it more compact than the Ultimate, and one hand carryable, it doesn't have the storage space or as big a battery and can't charge as fast as the Ultimate. It weighs about five pounds less than the Ultimate at 52 pounds. Some of you that watched my last video where I compared the Energy Kodiak to the Yeti 1000 may wonder why I built the Ultimate Junior when I had already bought the Yeti 1000, which is a much better system than the Kodiak. Even their newer K2 model, which still doesn't address its two main problems of its smaller than advertised battery and low output inverter. Well, let me explain. As I stated in my last video, I couldn't build a good 1 kilowatt hour true 1500 watt solar generator for $850, which is how much I paid for the Yeti 1000 at Costco. But like most commercial products you buy, you just have to accept the specifications that come with that product, which may not be exactly what you want, which was the case with the Yeti 1000 and frankly, most other solar generators I see out there. Which is why I built the Ultimate in the first place. I don't like the NMC type of battery in the Yeti. I understand why they use them, because the batteries cost less and are lighter than an LFP battery. They aren't concerned about getting 10 to 20 years of daily cycling like you can with the LFP battery. They just want to make sure they will last until their warranty expires. Then hey, the user will have to go back to them to get the battery replaced. It's a win-win for the company. They make a profit when you buy the system, make even more money when you come back to replace the battery, and even a second battery replacement all the while, a system with an LFP battery will still be on its original. The second problem with NMC batteries on a 12 volt system is that their voltages are different than a standard 12 volt lead acid battery. A lot of appliances designed to run on a 12 volt system 
will shut down when they see a voltage around 11 volts, like my Dometic freezer or this cheap inverter. A 12 volt NMC battery voltage range is from about 9 to 12 and a half volts. With voltage sag, some appliances will shut down with about half of its energy still in the battery. An LFP battery with a voltage range of about 10 volts to 14 and a half totally encompasses a lead acid battery voltage range that most 12 volt appliances are designed to use. So with a little regret, I returned my Yeti 1000 to Costco and decided to build my own 12 volt solar generator. The ultimate solar generator is a 20 volt system. It runs almost everything I would want to power with the inverter and 24 volts. But there are a few things that require a 12 volt battery, like this 300 watt pure sign inverter which is why I decided to make the Ultimate Junior a 12 volt system. I used a medium sized rigid tool case. It's heavy duty, has a large center handle for one handed carrying or two smaller handles on either end for two hand or two person carrying. It was almost a perfect size for the design I had in mind. I won't go into a lot of detail of how I designed it. It would take too long. Most people that would build something like this already know how to do it. If you don't, there are literally dozens of videos on YouTube showing you how. And if you don't have an SBMS, your design will be somewhat different than I have here anyway. I made the Ultimate Junior with three levels. The battery is on the bottom. The middle section is for most of the wiring. The top level is for the inverter. I used plywood separators between levels. The SBMS is on one end with a heatsink. The other end has all the connections. That's it. I wanted to keep it clean and simple without too much stuff on the outside. I did have one concern with the inverter inside and no fans. It is capable of running at 2000 watts, but I only plan to use it for relatively light loads up to about 200 watts. Everyday cycling. So I tested it at 1100 watts for one hour. The temperature got up to about 105 degrees, which is no problem. And I also ran it at about 200 watts for over 25, 24 hours. It never got over 85 degrees. If I ever have to run it at a higher wattage for long periods of time, I simply need to open the lid to keep the inverter cool. I could charge it at 600 watts, but since the only 12 volt solar panel I have, which I made many years ago, can only put out 30 watts, I decided to get another 30 amp, 30 volt universal power supply, just like I use with the Ultimate solar generator. Since they both can charge at 12 volt or 20 volt battery system, I will always have a spare in case one dies. I have been using the one on the Ultimate solar generator for about two years and 600 cycles and it still works great. I will only charge the Ultimate Junior at about 300-350 watts or less than 25 amps for added life to the power supply and the batteries. In case you're wondering, both the Ultimate and the Ultimate Junior are still being powered by solar panels. Solar panels from my main solar system. 
I was getting over 5,700 watts at times during last winter with my solar system. Not bad for a 5.5 kilowatt system that's 10 years old. As a side note, I told viewers I had ordered two Tesla power walls, but I got tired of waiting for them, so I canceled my order and made Two batteries myself, LFP batteries, of course, an 8 kilowatt hour with cells I got for free because some had been in a fire and some the BMS system was useless and allowed the batteries to either totally discharge or overcharge. Some batteries were at half a volt and others puffed up like marshmallows. Out of the 160 80 amp hour batteries, I took the best and made two batteries, one for my brother and one for me. 16S 2P system at 48 volts. I couldn't use a regular BMS system for the batteries. At each battery, cell resistance was way different from each other. So I used a battery equalizing system that can equalize at over one amp on each battery. Even with that, I had to keep the voltage between about 3.2 and 3.4 volts or the resistance on some cells would have overpowered the equalizer and either over or under charge some of the cells. Amazingly, the batteries have been working great over the last year, cycling about 6 kilowatts every day. I made a second 10 kilowatt hour LFP battery with 32 100 amp hour cells, the same cells as I used in the Ultimate Junior. Total cost was $4,100, which is a lot cheaper than most people pay for a battery of that size. Both batteries can usually power the house all night. The solar system can produce about 35 kilowatt hours on a sunny day. This will almost power the house. The problem is I have two all-electric cars, a Tesla Model 3 and a Chevrolet Bolt. They can easily double the house power usage. By the way, without making another video about the Model 3 and the Bolt, because it's been done a lot on the internet, I'll just say that the Tesla Model 3, for the money, is the best car there is. The Chevy Bolt, not so much. I'll be glad when its lease is over and I can return. So with the two all-electric cars, I still have to use grid power. But the two solar generators are charged daily from my main solar system. It's just that the power is coming from the house power sockets, which gets their power from the solar panels and main batteries. This is just a little test. I used with this small 300 watt pure sign inverter plugged into the cigarette lighter connection. I wanted to see how much energy it used to power the appliances I normally have hooked up to the Ultimate Junior, namely a 42 inch TV, TiVo with a hard drive, and a Roku. Surprisingly, the little 300 watt inverter used more power than the 2000 watt Kotec, but only a few watts difference. The Ultimate Junior cost about $1,400 to build. I could have made one for around $700. I could have put in a cheap inverter, like so many others do, for less than $300, instead of paying almost $600 for the Kotec. I could have used cheap NMC batteries, even used ones, and saved 
saved another two or three hundred dollars. I could have saved another hundred and fifty or so and not used an SBMS 120. But the SBMS is the heart of the system. I couldn't call it the ultimate junior without it. I could have built one for about half the price. But in an emergency, do you want something that will maybe be okay? Or do you want something you know can handle the job?